Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host for this module on starting the computer. We're going to learn about the BIOS and the CMOS inside of your computer. This is from the CompTIA certification training. That's section 1.1 from 220.601, where we're identifying fundamental principles of using the PC. So we need to know what is the BIOS, what is the CMOS, what is firmware made. And you're going to learn all of those things over this next series of videos. We're going to start today with learning about the BIOS, the basic input output system. This BIOS is something you'll find in every PC. So this is going to be an important thing to know about. We're also going to learn about something called the CMOS, or the Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. We really like our abbreviations in the computer world. Fortunately, most of the times you'll always hear these referred to as the BIOS and the CMOS. And we're going to talk about finding the CMOS settings, accessing them from the BIOS software, and what all of this means and how all of it works together. Let's start with what happens when you start a computer. You hit the power button for the first time. What happens? How does the computer know how to talk to the keyboard, how it should interface with monitor and show you information on the screen, how the hard drive works? Where does it even go on the hard drive to start the operating system? How does it use the CD-ROM? This is a complex conversation that has to take place every time you power your computer and all the time as you're using your computer. If only there was some type of basic fundamental system for having all of these different components communicating between each other. The BIOS ROM is the basic input output system, BIOS. And this is the firmware inside of our computer system. This firmware is in charge of starting the computer, maintaining the communication between all of the di different diverse components. It really is the conductor of this orchestra that we have inside of our computer. It's really just some software that's loaded on a chip. This is a picture of the BIOS inside one of my computers. And you can see it's very simple. It doesn't take up very much room. And it's really designed to sit there and be the core of the components that are communicating back and forth. It is every PC that has one of these. So you're never going to run into a situation where a PC doesn't have a BIOS in it. Uh, when you power up the machine, it has to know what to do. This is the first place your computer goes to to determine what types of hardware are connected to the computer and what it should do once it starts up. You'll also find that other individual components within your computer also have a BIOS. So the network card, the hard drive, the video cards that are inside your machines also have BIOS associated with them. We aren't going to talk about those very much in this. They aren't part of the CompTIA a certification. But it's nice to know, uh, important to know, that each one of those individual components also has a basic input-output system associated with it. So if this read-only memory that starts your computer up is really the conductor and it's leading this band, where is the music? What is it playing? Well, what it's playing is the CMOS. The CMOS is Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. CMOS. You'll never hear us refer to this as a complementary metal oxide semiconductor because it's too difficult to say. So we've always just called it the CMOS. Now this uh, technically is a type of memory, but when we're referring to it in a PC, we're also referring to what's on this memory, the type of information that we're writing into this memory. And as you're probably aware, when you turn your computer off, the memory that's inside of your machine, it all, everything that's in there disappears. Memory needs constant refreshing by some power source to remain active. And so this uh, random access memory that we have is also in our CMOS backed up with a battery. So uh, on a very old system, you may turn it on and it may prompt you for a date and a time, or it might tell you that everything that was in the CMOS is no longer there. It's been wiped clean. That's probably because that the battery that's on your motherboard is something that has lost its charge and it now can't remember any of that. All of the BIOS configuration details are stored in the CMOS memory. And so when we write information into our BIOS, and you're going to see as we're going through it, you'll have the option at the end of the configuration process to save this information. This is where it saves. And it's not saving to a floppy drive. It's not saving to a hard drive. It's saving to something that's much more fundamental that's on your computer. And it's not a lot of information. It only has to know what's connected to your computer 
hardware and how it should associate with those pieces of hardware. So you'll often find that it's only about 128 bytes of content, not kilobytes, 128 characters or so of content. These days you'll find that it's integrated into the South Bridge, so it's on the chipset of the computer itself. If you look at the, the motherboard manual for your computer, you'll find in there information. It may even tell you where the BIOS is, where the CMOS is, and you can look at your motherboard and find out where it is on your system. Let's talk about configuring that CMOS. When you start your computer, a number of things happen. You may get a splash screen on your computer that shows you a graphic of the manufacturer of the computer, and it may tell you, press this key to start the configuration process. Press F2. It may say press delete. Some computers require you to hold down the control key and hit S. I, long time ago, worked with a computer. You had to hold the control key and the alt key and the S key. They really didn't want you going in that configuration unless you really, really had to. And so this is how you get into the system configuration to that BIOS so that you can add information and configurations in there. And it goes by very quickly these days. You'll find that a computer screen, when it starts up, doesn't spend much time on that initial screen. It really goes by very quickly. I did a quick screenshot of one. So you could see, for instance, this is a BIOS made by AMI. And this one, uh, you see the date and the version number of the BIOS. So when the system starts up, you'll know immediately what version of BIOS is running on there. And there's the secret message right there. Press the delete key to run the setup. So as long as you can oftentimes keep hitting the delete key as this starts up because it goes by so quickly, uh, then you will automatically go into that BIOS. And you can see there's... Uh, other things that happen on that splash screen, but that's what we're looking for. On my Dell computer, it's an F2, so I have to make sure I hit F2 when I'm doing that. In fact, let's go through some scenarios where we launch the BIOS configuration. What we want to do is test it, but I don't want to test it on my computer. This would be interesting to go through, especially if you're studying for the CompTIA A plus certification. It would be nice to do some testing of this without making sure we damage anything in our computer. We don't want to change a configuration of our computer and make it so that it won't boot up again. And you can absolutely do that if you're messing around with the BIOS. So what I've got here are two options for you. This is called the VMware Player or Microsoft Virtual PC. And what this allows you to do is run a virtual computer on your own desktop. So you can go through the BIOS configuration and change settings all day long, and you'll never change any configurations within your own PC. This is just nice to have anyway. These days, these virtualization products are also free. So VMware, out at VMware.com slash product slash player is a good place to go. We're going to use the VMware front end on our computer today. They also have a number of what they call appliances, which are really just software virtual machines that you can download and run inside of your virtual machine player. Microsoft also has their own virtualization technology called Virtual PC, and you can find it at this very long URL right here. Uh, if you go and download any of those and install them, you have the option to create a new computer inside of your computer, or a virtual computer, and from there you'll be able to launch some of these configurations and play around with the BIOS. And That's exactly what we're going to do right now. And here's my desktop. You can see I have the Microsoft Virtual PC. I have the VMware Workstation available. I'm going to run the VMware Workstation and see if I can get into one of my virtual machines. I've got a few set up here, but I'm just going to run one that runs DOS usually. And I'm going to start this up. And on this virtual machine, you have to press the F2 key as it's starting. And I was able to do that very quickly. It's so quick that it goes by. You have to make sure you know that key. Sometimes you have to start it and stop it and start it and stop it many times. I found in the VMware Workstation, it's the F2 key. In the Microsoft is the product, and that's the virtual PC, uh, it is the delete key. So you can see the, the differences between different systems. And as you go from manufacturer to manufacturer, it's going to be a different key every time. So make sure you know that key when you go into working with your BIOS. We're going to go into configuring a BIOS and look at other settings within a virtual machine in the next video series. So make sure if you're interested in knowing more about what's inside of this BIOS that you have a look at that. When you start working with BIOS and CMOS settings, 
there are some important tips I want to make you aware of. You want to always have a backup of the configuration, not necessarily a backup of the physical BIOS, what's inside the chip, but the configuration of the CMOS. And that's an important thing. It's not as easy as you might think to get that either. Because you're in this system where your operating system hasn't booted, you can't do a normal print screen. You can't save it to a floppy disk. There's generally no way to do that within a BIOS configuration. So those CMOS settings, you'll often uh, you will have a printer connected to your computer. You can hit the print screen. Sometimes it will go off to that printer and be able to print out at least page after page after page of this information. What you might find is you're sitting there with a pencil or a, a sheet of paper and just writing down manually what those settings are. Make, making a change in the BIOS configuration can stop your computer from working, and then you're going to have to figure out what you did to cause that to happen. So don't make a change of these BIOS configuration settings unless you're absolute, absolutely certain that this is the parameter that you're interested in changing and you understand what the implications of that might be. You can very easily change your memory setting, change the setting of CPU timing and memory timing, and your computer may work and it may not. Or it may work and you'll find that it becomes very unstable. And that's something that is caused by a number of these changes that you can make inside that BIOS configuration written out to your CMOS. Did I mention that you might want to write these things down? So that's why you want to think about before you make a change to your BIOS and make a change to these CMOS configurations that you have absolutely made sure that you can revert back to those previous versions at any time. So in review, we've looked at what a basic input output system of your computer is, the BIOS. We've looked at CMOS and how it stores that information that we've configured using our BIOS. And I've also shown you how you can use a virtual machine or even your machine that you have at home without any uh, virtual software to access those settings and have a look at exactly what's inside of that BIOS. For more CompTIA certification, we've got discussion boards and study guides and a lot of other videos. Feel free to visit our website at freeaplus.com.